I wanted to ask all the panelists if they can for a moment. You know, what we found in education in the Central Valley, and I, I hear about it everywhere actually, is that parents tend to trust the teachers and the principals and not ask the hard questions about their children's education. So I'd like you to share with the audience today why it is so important for parents to get involved uh, in their school to ask the hard questions and also um, how it will move the Common Core forward if that's what we hope to do. So John, would you like to start? Sure, critically important. Uh, parents not only have the right to this knowledge, it's our obligation to provide this knowledge. Um, uh, uh, Walter and, and all of the trustees, and Linda, you in particular, have done a tremendous job at the Aspen Institute at actually helping create materials for us to use in our school districts. Uh, we have a uh, parent center in every single school. We have 1,014 schools in Los Angeles and an entire primer so that parents can understand what to demand um, and understand what they should be intolerant of um, in, in all of the 109 languages that we speak uh, in, in, in the amazing city of Los languages. Angeles. Um, the notion is to make sure that, um, I say this all the time, uh, knowledge is the underground currency of the privilege. And when everyone owns the same knowledge, um, in a city like mine where overwhelmingly everyone lives in circumstances of uh, peril and poverty, then you begin to provide true equal access to students. So this is an enormous issue uh, for parents to realize not only it is their right, but that we actually have to provide them uh, access to do that. And I think the power of that is parent to parent. So I would agree with John and Ed, just a couple of quick thoughts. One, I remember a world when we always thought doctor knew best or teacher knew best. None of us now, I hope, think doctor knows best. And then we should be really prepared to, that doesn't mean doctors know nothing. It just means we should be prepared to be informed and uh, questioning consumers. And I think that's true in education. But I think there's a larger point here, I, I, and we haven't had a chance to talk much about it. I think the future of this country depends on educating our kids to a very, very different level, particularly those kids who grow up in the most challenged environments. The 21st century is going to demand skills of people in the workplace that we didn't demand in the 20th century. When I started public school in New York City, well, think about it, in 1951, more than 60% of our workforce were college dropouts. Uh, high school dropouts, pardon me, high school dropouts, kids who didn't graduate high school. Today, that number is 6% and declining. There's not going to be an array of jobs for poorly educated kids. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is the middle class will get hollowed out, and increasingly, we will become a polarized society between haves and have nots. So I don't want you to just get involved in your kids' education. Get involved in all our kids' education. People in this yeah. room, really yeah. important. No question about Leader it. Leader Kanner, do you have some yeah. final thoughts for yeah, us? I, I think that the, uh, I think as John had said, and, and Joel for sure, that parents are going to get involved if if the school systems and the government does its job in alerting them that they actually can. And I think Governor Bush is famous for saying, if, if you want to excite parents, positively or negatively, go out there and institute a report card system for schools. And the minute parents see that report card, for good or for bad, they will be in the principal's office. And so I think that there is a collaborative effort that needs to take place to encourage that kind of empowerment uh, going forward. 